Hi, this is Sonia Dusak. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate KP from KC and vice versa. The problem we're dealing with here is as such. At 1000 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant KC is 3.93 for the reaction. Carbon monoxide gas plus hydrogen gas gives you methane gas and water as a gas. What is the equilibrium constant KP? Before we start, I'd like to talk about the general difference between Kc and Kp. In both cases, we're dealing with products over reactants. And what those two are when you have the equilibrium condition. But the difference is that Kc is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants where the concentrations are in molarity. So in this case, Kc would be equal to the concentration of methane gas in moles per liter over the concentration of water in moles per liter divided by the concentration of carbon monoxide times the concentration of hydrogen gas raised to the third. And all of those concentrations, again, would be in moles per liter. The difference with Kp is that we're not dealing with molar concentrations. We're dealing instead with partial pressures. So in this case, you'd have still the products over reactants, but it would be the partial pressure of the products over the reactants. So you'd have the partial pressure of methane gas multiplied by the partial pressure of water as a gas divided by the partial pressure of carbon monoxide gas multiplied by the partial pressure of hydrogen gas. And that last term is raised to the third power. So what we're doing for this problem is we're converting directly between Kc and Kp. So we don't actually have to know the concentrations in moles per liter to find Kc. We have Kc and we go directly to Kp from there. We also don't know the partial pressures of any of the gases. So the important equation to know here is Kp is equal to Kc times R T raised to the delta N. So this equation shows the direct relationship between Kp and Kc. So a few things you need to know here. R is the gas constant, which is equal to 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per kelvins mole. And then temperature is the temperature in kelvins. So in this problem, we're given the temperature in degrees Celsius. So that means we need to convert from degrees Celsius to kelvins. And to do that, we can use the equation kelvins is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. So if we add 273 to 1,000, we get 1,273 Kelvins. So that's the temperature that we're going to want to use in this equation. And the last thing we need to know here is about delta N. So let's say we have the generic equation that I'm going to write here. So for this equation, we have the uppercase letters A and B as the reactants, and the lowercase letters represent the stoichiometric coefficients for those reactants. And the same goes for the products. We have capital C and D as the products, and the lowercase c and the lowercase d as the stoichiometric coefficients for those products. So what n is, or sorry, delta n, it's going to be equal to little c plus lowercase d minus lowercase a plus lowercase B. So in the reaction that we're dealing with then, N is going to be equal to 1, which is the coefficient for methane gas, plus 1, which is the coefficient for water as a gas. So those are the two products. And we're going to subtract from that the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients for the reactants. 
So the coefficient for carbon monoxide is 1, and we're going to add to that the coefficient for hydrogen gas, which is 3. So if you do the math there, what you end up with is negative 2 as your delta N value. So what you need to do next is substitute all of these knowns into your equation. So let's do that. So what we have is Kp being equal to Kc, so it's 3.93, and we're going to multiply that by our R value, which is 0 0.08206 liter per atmosphere times Kelvin mole, and multiply that by our temperature in Kelvins, which would be 1,273 Kelvin. And we're going to raise that to the negative 2, because that's what our delta N is. So it's important here to make sure that you don't multiply all three of these terms first and then raise them to the negative 2. What you want to do first is multiply the gas constant R times the temperature T, raise that to the negative 2, and then multiply all of that by 3.93. So let's do that step by step. In this case, we have 3.93. And if you multiply the gas constant times the temperature in Kelvins, you'll get 104.462. And you want to raise that to the negative 2. And once you've raised that to the negative 2, then you multiply it by 3.93. So when you do that, you get an answer of 3.60 times 10 to the negative 4. So that is your Kp value. So if you have to go the other way, if you need to find Kc knowing Kp, you just rearrange the equation. So what we did so far was find Kp if you know Kc. What if you know Kp and you want to find Kc? So that's easy. All you need to do is rearrange this equation. Sorry, Kc times RT raised to the negative, I'm sorry, raised to the delta N. So you just rearrange things. So you move all of this to the other side by dividing both sides by that. So you have RT to the negative N is equal to Kc. So if you knew Kp, you just need to substitute Kp into here, and then also, just as we did for the problem I showed you, substitute in the R, the T, and the delta N, and then you can solve for Kc. So this is how you solve for Kc, knowing Kp, and then I also showed you how to solve for Kp if you know Kc. So that's it.